This is the renewed Opel Insignia and this car is basically developed by General Motors. Now that may sound a little bit odd because Opel nowadays owns by Stellantis, the newly formed auto group, which also includes car brands like Fiat, Peugeot and about 12 other car manufacturers. However, shortly before they were owned by Group PSA, who in their turn bought it from General Motors, who owned Opel since 1931. And now there's a new Opel Astra and there's only one model left that was still developed during the General Motors days and that's this Insignia. It did however just got a facelift and some new motors and in this video I'm going to tell you all about it. So yes, quite a few changes at Opel, and you could say the same about this Insignia. It has just received a facelift and some new motors that I'm going to talk about in just a moment. But first, let's look at the new exterior design. Opel made a couple of small design changes to the exterior of this renewed Insignia. For instance, you get new headlights. They're a bit more narrow, a bit more pointy, but also the actual light itself is new. You now get LED lights as standard, but you can also get matrix LED lights, which Opel calls the IntelliLux pixel lights. That sounds very complicated and it actually is. You get 84 LED elements in every headlamp and the light beams can be adjusted very accurately. This allows the automatic high beam to illuminate just about everything in front of you while avoiding oncoming traffic. The grille is also a little bit different. It's now slightly wider and get this decorative strip here that runs all the way across the entire grille and it almost runs into the daylight running lights here on the side. Now, as you can see, the grille is completely black, just as this strip. Normally it will be all be chrome, but this car that I have here has the chrome delete package or the black exterior pack or whatever Opel calls it. So you get this black grille, you get this black air vent on the side, which is actually fake even on this sporty GSI version. And also the window sills are completely black as well. Now behind the grille, you get these louvers, these slats that can open and close. So if the engine needs a lot of air and a lot of cooling, they will open. But if you don't need much cooling, they will of course close and then you get better aerodynamics and a better fuel consumption. Then let's talk motor options. This is the most powerful version that you can get of the Insignia. This is the GSI version that has a four cylinder turbo petrol engine, two liters providing 230 horsepower and 350 newton meters of torque. You can also get a two liter petrol engine with 200 horsepower and diesel engines are available with 122 and 174 horsepower. And like I said, this is the GSI version, the most powerful version that you can get of the Insignia with 230 horsepower. And as you can see, this car has a massive airbox here on the left side. But we're going to be talking about the performance in just a second when I take the car out for a drive. At the back, also a couple of subtle changes. You get this new rear bumper here. And what really stands out are these exhaust tips that are actually real. They're not fake and they're actually made from aluminium. So yeah, quite different than you see on most cars nowadays. And of course, the real exhaust pipes are just behind there. You also get a spoiler on this sporty GSI version. It's not that big, but it just adds a little bit more sportiness to this GSI. There's also some new technical stuff here at the back. For example, you get a new reversing camera and a rear cross traffic alert system that can detect objects with its radar sensors. The system gives you a warning if a person or a vehicle comes from the left or the right side when you're trying to back out of your parking spot, for example. And this may look like a sedan, but it actually isn't. It's actually a hatchback, which I prefer because instead of a small trunk lid, you get this big hatch. Now on the inside, you get 490 liters of cargo space. And of course you can fold the seats down. You got these small buttons on the side here. And if you push them, the rear seats will go down automatically. And then you got 1450 liters of luggage space, which is actually quite decent. But if you really want to carry a lot of high stuff, you're better off buying the sports tour, which of course is the station version or the estate version, if you will because that car is better able to carry longer and higher stuff. Because as you can see, this has a sloping roof line, meaning that you're not able to carry a lot of high stuff here in the back. The Insignia has quite a large car and you can really tell on the inside. I left the seat in the same position as how I would use it. And while well, I got plenty of room for my legs. Only if I really sit like this, my knees would hit the seat. Um, but yeah, plenty of room here. And I can even fit my feet under the seat. There's not that much headroom, however. I'm 1 meter 80 and if I really sit up straight, uh, my head will hit the roof. 
Um, so if you're a bit longer, this is probably not the best place to sit. You're better off in the front. Of course, you also get an armrest here uh, with two cup holders. You also get two air vents, two USB ports, and you can even get heated seats here in the back. Here in the interior of the Insignia, not a lot has changed. Everything basically still looks the same as in the pre-facelift Insignia. However, there is one major change, and that is that this infotainment system is suddenly lightning fast. It's really remarkable. I really didn't expect that in this new facelifted model. Every menu you open on the infotainment system immediately opens, which is just a very nice experience, especially when you're driving. You don't have to wait like a milliseconds or even longer for stuff to open. So I'm really pleasantly surprised by that. And I also think it's well, kind of funny that there's like a lot of premium German car manufacturers that spend millions and millions and maybe even billions on developing the best and the fastest infotainment system, but they rarely succeed. But Opel seems to have done it, so well done Opel. You can't really tell that this uh, interior design is becoming a little bit outdated. Uh, the screen is fine and you even get a digital gauge cluster in front of you. But you do get a lot of physical buttons here that may look a little bit outdated. However, I really like them. I actually prefer them sometimes over digital screens. Take for example this volume knob, which is just really big and therefore may look a little bit outdated. But I don't even have to look for it. I can just keep my eyes on the road and I will just find it instantly. So I really like that. And there's also a couple of buttons here for the climate control down here. And even two buttons for the heated seats and the ventilated seats that you can also get on the Insignia. There's also a couple of new technical gadgets and safety systems available on the Insignia. For example, the Insignia now includes forward collision alerts with automatic emergency braking and pedestrian recognition. Active lane keeping assist, blind spot warning, adaptive cruise control with emergency braking, traffic sign recognition and advanced park assist. Alright, let's take it for a drive. So like I said, today we're driving the GSI version, the top model that you can get of the Insignia. 230 horsepower, 0 to 100 kilometers an hour, takes 7.4 seconds and it has a top speed of 233 kilometers an hour. So you got plenty of power, uh, but it isn't really like a sports car. It's just too big and heavy and 230 horsepower is very nice, but of course it isn't like an amazing amount of horsepower. It does however have plenty of torque, uh, meaning that this is a really easy and comfortable car. It's really easy to get this car going without too much effort. And that makes this car a really good car to use on a daily basis, especially if you do a lot of kilometers, if you really spend a lot of time on this car, then this is just a really great Grand Tour. This GSI version does have the flex ride chassis, meaning you get adaptive uh, shock absorbers, uh, suspension, throttle response, uh, steering. Uh, this car can all adjust that automatically uh, because you got three drive modes. If you put the car in normal, the car will decide for itself what is the best mode to be in. So if you drive really sporty, the car will go into sport mode. If you just really take it easy, the car will go into tour mode. You can also do that yourself with pressing the mode button here on the center console. If you put the car in sport, you really get a stiff chassis. It's really not a pleasant experience uh, because it's really, really stiff. But if you really wanna have a sporty experience, you can just press that button and go into sport mode. Uh, and you can have some fun actually because this car also has the four wheel drive system on this GSI version. Only on the GSI version you can get that. And this car also has torque factoring so you can actually have some fun in the corners. And like I said, you can also go into tour mode, uh, which I really prefer with this car. I think this car is more of a grand tour than like a sports machine. If you go into tour mode, you get a really relaxed chassis that absorbs the bumps and potholes really well. Even if you enjoy going really fast on, for example, the Autobahn, uh, which I did with this car, because I took this car to Russelsheim, the hometown of Opel, uh, for the introduction of the all new Opel Astra. That video is already online, so if you want to know everything about the new Opel Astra, do check out that video. I will leave a link in the description below to that video. But I took this car on the Autobahn, went a little bit faster, as you do on the Autobahn. And in the tour mode, this car is really comfortable. Uh, the drive to Rüsselsheim was about five hours uh, one way, so I did about 10 hours on the Autobahn. And it was just a really comfortable ride, even if you do really high speeds. I do have to say, in this GSI, you get these bucket seats, which look pretty cool. And uh, you can even like set them in like 18 different ways and they even have a massage function. However, after a couple of hours, they're not that comfortable anymore. 
they're not really made for that but just so you know uh, if you want to get these bucket seats they're really nice to have because they really keep you in your place especially if you do a bit of sporty driving but they're not the most comfortable seats that you can get so that's basically everything you need to know about this renewed Opel Insignia. If you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you in the next one.